He lives life in the fast lane. But he also knows how to slow down and appreciate the finer things in life. Meet Glenn Tan, CEO of Motor Image Enterprises, on the final episode of the CEO Epicure. Saturday, 10.30 p.m. on Channel News Asia. CEO Epicure is brought to you by Subaru All-Wheel Drive. Channel News Asia wraps up the year that was. In Highlights 2005. On 27th December, a look back at the key events that shook Singapore. And a look ahead at those that will shape its future. On 28th December, a recap of Singapore market trends and issues, plus analyst outlooks for the coming year. On 29th December, a rundown of the stories that made yesterday's news, and a preview of tomorrow's challenges for the US, Europe and the Middle East. On 30th December, a review of the triumphs and tragedies that struck Southeast Asia, and how the region plans to fight back. On 31st December, a roundup of major developments in East Asia and its impact on the world. Before setting your sights on the new year, tune in to Highlights 2005 at 8.30 p.m. on Channel News Asia. Hotline 6822268. Every call has a story. As a news and information provider, we believe in prompt services to help you make that critical decision for your business. In a way, we're pleased to be at your service whenever it's needed. It's no surprise we are the channel of choice among Singapore's top management. Channel News Asia. Going the extra mile for you. Hello, I'm Chloe Cho with the latest headlines on Channel News Asia. A minute silence observed in countries fringing the Indian Ocean today. It is a day to remember the thousands killed a year ago when the tsunami hit. The day's commemorations began in the Indonesian province of Aceh. President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono paid a special tribute to the survivors of the disaster for their resolve to go on with their lives. He then switched on a wailing siren that forms part of an early warning system. Officials tested it out for the first time today. Besides using seismographs and text message alerts, they tried out an evacuation plan in Padang in western Sumatra. Many residents were sent running through the streets. They were warned ahead of time that this was a drill. Some Thai residents, though, are staying away from elaborate ceremonies. They say the rites were expensive and inappropriate. A representative of a Ban Nam Kem village said many in this fishing, fishing community will instead hold their own quiet Buddhist service in the village. They feel the large sums of money being spent on these ceremonies should be used to help the people. Chinese auditors have uncovered 36 billion U.S. dollars in improper spending of government funds for this year. Xinhua News says this came to light during a nationwide annual audit of 22,000 officials by the National Audit Office. Investigators have also promised to look into three state-owned banks for wrongdoing by staff. And Japan's ordered emergency inspections of railway wind gauges after an express train was apparently blown from its tracks in a winter storm. Four people died when all six train cars derailed in Yamagata Prefecture, about 300 kilometers north of Tokyo. One of the cars slammed into a pig shed. Fighting strong winds, it took rescuers 14 hours to recover the last body. And you're watching Channel News Asia. As a news and information provider, we believe in prompt services to help you make that critical decision for your business. In a way, we're pleased to be at your service whenever it's needed. 
It's no surprise we are the channel of choice among Singapore's top management. Channel News Asia. Going the extra mile for you. It all started here on the seas of Aceh at the northern tip of the Indonesian island of Sumatra. The undersea earthquake and the ensuing giant waves swept these shores and those of at least eight other countries, devastating millions of lives up to the coast of Africa. The Asian tsunami shook the very core of humanity and triggered the biggest disaster relief effort in human history. Hi, I'm Sujadi Siswo and welcome to the waves of change surviving the tsunami. Join me in this first of a two-part special as we take a look at how lives have been transformed and rebuilt. Let's start here in Aceh. <laughs> The town of Malabo, West Aceh, is seeing more vehicles than ever. Flashy new motorcycles roam the streets. At mosques across the province, worshippers have been more generous in the months after tsunami. Yang tidak kena langsung dengan musibah tsunami hanya lim dampaknya saja itu mereka yang sudah punya masih punya tempat tinggal itu masih terus berkembang terus ekonomi mereka malah yang sudah yang sebelumnya kena mereka yang kena musibah sekalipun kemudian apabila mendapat ada bantuan dari pihak tertentu ada modal awal untuk bergerak mereka terus bergerak terus melejit ke atas kehidupan mereka malah sekarang kalau Honda Honda yang baru masuk itu bagaikan orang beli pisang goreng di pasar kue di begitu larisnya jadi kita nggak tahu dari mana mereka dapat duit tapi begitulah kenyataannya the presence of international aid agencies has significantly contributed to this progress and the good news is much of the 11 billion US dollars worth of foreign aid pledged to Aceh is being realized the influx of aid workers has also resulted in jobs and much needed income for the locals. However, not everyone has been so fortunate. More than 65,000 are still living in tents. It's not a conducive place, especially for a newborn like Muhammad Aidil Fitra. His parents, Mr. and Mrs. Safrinaldi, never planned to raise their third child in a tent. Gak tahu bahwa kejadian kami waktu periksa umur kandungan dia lima bulan. Kita kan minum PKB kan, jadi kan tsunami kan gak ada di mana lagi kita cari PKB. Saya senang, uh, maksudnya saya bersyukur saya diberikan lagi titipan sama saya itu. Saya senang saya menerima ada bayi lagi. Saya pasrah aja. Fortunately, little Muhammad Aidil and his family may not have to wait too long. The new home, about 100 meters from their tent, is being built by the Catholic Relief Service, one of dozens of NGOs helping to build permanent dwellings. For other tent residents, they try to make the best of things while waiting for their houses to be completed. Some Sidar and her husband opened a small coffee stall in front of their tent. The takings are meager compared to what her husband used to get as a boat builder. But it's more respectable than sitting around waiting for handouts. Daripada nanti nganggur, kadang-kadang nanti ada kerja, kadang-kadang enggak. Kan lebih baik kayak gini, kita buka usaha, ada hari-harian gitu. Jadi ada uang sikit-sikit dikumpul gitu. Despite international criticism of the slow pace of redevelopment taking place across Aceh, Village head Kasmir Kudus thinks it could not have taken place faster, at least not here. 
land ownership has been the main obstacle. But this village has managed to resolve this issue more quickly than most other areas. Sebab saya berhubungan langsung terus dengan NGO-NGO ini melalui ini yang kecamatan. Ya, memberikan data-data yang cepat. Maka orang itu cepat dia bangun. Cepat kita memberi data. Mereka cepat datang ke desa kita mengukur tanah, memberi data yang betul. Ya, jadi mereka ini membangun terus. Ya, itu tergantung keadaan. Keadaan alamnya, hujannya. Lambat pembangunan karena keadaan cuaca. Kalau cuacanya baik, bagus. This area in Malabo is fortunate to have a district officer who is well versed in Indonesian law. He is instrumental in providing legal certainty over land ownership, which is needed by the NGOs before they commit to build permanent houses. Realizing that complications over land ownership would arise soon after the tsunami, District Chief Tengku Ahmad Dade came up with an ingenious idea of producing a legal document to replace the land title deeds that had been lost. Jadi ini ditandatangani oleh yang bersangkutan yang punya rumah yang memiliki tanah, kemudian diketahui oleh tetangga-tetangganya supaya tidak terjadi konflik dengan tetangganya, kemudian diketahui oleh kepala desa, kemudian diketahui oleh saya, kemudian langsung kita serahkan ke NGO. Uh, untuk NGO bisa melihat bahwa tanah itu tidak persoalan lagi untuk segera dibangun. Tengku Ahmad's idea has borne fruit. International aid agencies like the Salvation Army responded by building more than 1,000 houses in his district within months. That's more than two-thirds of what's been built in the whole of Malabo so far. Meanwhile, life must continue even in barracks. Rapai is a form of Achenis choral singing. Its lyrics steep in Islamic tradition. This singing group is part of a significant effort to ensure that culture and traditions continue to have a place in the rebuilding of Archenis lives. Commerce, however, can't wait as people need to earn a living. And the bustle at the market bears testimony to this. This market area in the middle of Malabo was reopened just a few months back. For petty traders, this is their economic lifeline after the tsunami completely wiped out their livelihood and most find their own funding to restart their business. Unlike home dwellers, business owners get no priority for assistance. The tsunami destroyed everything Iskandar's family built in the last 17 years, except this door roller. But with 1,500 US dollars, we resume business. Modalnya kita pinjam-pinjam sama kawan-kawannya ya ada kan. Ya modal kait dupung kita utang dulu sama toko-tokonya. Ya udah habis semua dia. Kita store. Business may not be as brisk as before the tsunami, but infrastructure projects such as this new pier being built with funds from Singapore hold promise. Never before have Archinis enjoyed so many spanking new schools and orphanages built by the international community. These projects, however, take time. The scale of the disaster is just too overwhelming to expect quick fixes. The Archinis, however, are not standing still, while authorities and international donors find ways to expedite rebuilding efforts. They've realized the future of their community lies in their own hands. I'm Sujari Siswo, and you're watching Waves of Change, Surviving the Tsunami. Join Ken Te for the situation in Kaulak, Thailand, right after this break.
a Channel News Asia Documentary of the Week special. Take your business to the next level. Be part of the Global Entrepreneur Forum 2006. A full day seminar addressing growth challenges in the new economy. Happening on Monday, 16th January. Learn the tricks of the trade as world-renowned business leaders Dr. S. Thomas Emerson and Mr. Vickers Goel show you how to meet the demands of a global market. To sign up, log on to this website or call the hotline. Organized by Channel News Asia and Asia Seminar. Hi and welcome back to the program from Aceh, which you saw earlier. Now let's take a look at Thailand. Now right over there is Ban Nam Kem, a fishing village in southern Thailand which was virtually decimated by the December 26 tsunami. Now locals over there say almost 2,000 villagers died. That's almost half the death count of Thailand which stands at 5,500. Life is returning back to normal gradually, but still the impact of the tsunami reverberates across the village. <laughs> Ban Nam Kem, when literally translated, means village of salty water, a sadly ironic name. A year ago, the angry sea destroyed the lives of thousands of fishermen here. And in Thailand, over 30,000 households dependent on fishing lost their livelihoods. Amidst the now peaceful setting that belies the tragedy just a year ago, Khun Somjit's plaintive song speaks volumes. He sings a song of mourning to his mother, whose life was snuffed by the same ocean that fed her. His words are pained, but his strains sound almost like a tribute. He's dedicating his new boat to her memory. But it's also a day of great rejoicing, for it marks his family's long-awaited return to the sea after losing four members to the waves. He prays for protection against evil and calamity and consecrates his precious vessel that aid workers have donated. ถ้าบนพูดถึงในชีวิตของผมนะเกือบจะไม่อยากได้อะไรเลยชีวิตของผมนะมันหมดแล้วทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างของคิดว่าหมดแล้วเพราะนี่
ปกชาวบ้านพวกอะไรอย่างเงี้ยไงเยอะแยะบางคนเขาก็นินทาเขาก็ว่าไม่ดีสองเดือนแรกนั้นจะจะคนจะพูดตลอดเลยเวลาเราคิดว่าเป็นอย่างคนก็จะมองอแต่เราสองคนนะนะคนรู้สึกจริงๆแล้วแคร์เขาไหมบางทีนะก็แคร์แต่ว่าเราจะไปแคร์เขาเขาไม่ได้หาให้เรากินนี่เราก็เลยตัดสินใจว่าเราไม่ต้องสนใจเขาสักวันหนึ่งเขาก็จะหยุดพูดเองสองน้องนี่แหละค่ะสวยไหมสวยอาจจะคล่องเลยเลย <laughs> It's their basic instinct to survive that keeps them together. And needs B to take care of things when he's out at sea, and she needs a man to provide for her. อืมอยู่อยู่แกเราก็รักแกเพราะแกเป็นคนดีใช่ไหมแต่ว่ากับแฟนคนเก่านั้นเรื่องลืมมันเราคงไม่ลืมหรอกไอ้เรื่องกินข้าวช่วยเลยตีจอมันจอบตีจอบอ่ะตีจอบไม่ใช่จอบฟาร์มช่วยจอบฟาร์มดีว่าเขาฟาร์มดีฟาร์มดีช่วยไม่ช่วยหรอกไม่สวยใช่ไหมกินดีมันตายเลย But their new love also faced new pressures. It wasn't easy for Supop's 12-year-old daughter to adjust to her mother's new live-in partner. Social workers say many child survivors face difficulty adjusting to their new families on top of the trauma of the tsunami. The mental health department says the incidence of child depression is still high, even as the problem in adults has fallen significantly. We don't have uh, many interventions for the children. They change uh, like environment, like uh, they move from their own house to temporary shelter, and then they move to the permanent house again. And we don't confine, like uh, we don't focus on the social cohesion. Among them, because in uh, Asian country we have a uh, good support from uh, like uh, extended family. Dr. Benchapon's team plans to take child therapy into schools. They've trained some 200 teachers to spot problems in children and counsel them, an effort they hope will heal the wounds of the nation's future. As we've seen, the impact of the tsunami far exceeds its death toll, almost like a ripple effect which to many survivors seems to virtually have no end. Yet many are still propelled by a dogged determination to forge on, a spirit shared by their counterparts hundreds of kilometers across the Indian Ocean. Join Weber Varma for that story after the break. Cinematic journey above snow capped mountains, great lakes, and open seas from a bird's eye view. We bring you a ray glimpse into the lives of our feathered friends filled with seduction, love, and hate. Wings of Nature, exclusively on Channel News Asia's Documentary of the Week on Sunday at 7 30 p.m. Watching waves of change surviving the tsunami. With reports so far from Malabo in Indonesia and Kaulak in Thailand. Here on the Indian Peninsula's eastern coastline, over 10,000 people lost their lives in the Asian tsunami. That's more than double the Thai death toll. The last year has been about rehabilitation, the struggle to return to normalcy, and preparation should disaster strike again. I'm Devo Varma. Let's start here in Nagapattinam, one of the worst hit fishing villages on the coast of Tamil Nadu.
It's 8 a.m. and Nagapattinam's largest fishing boat bustles with activity. Fish sales took five months to return to pre-tsunami levels and have been registering steady growth ever since. Fishing, the primary form of livelihood here, was the first to recover, thanks largely to the rush by global NGOs and governmental agencies to provide new boats. Now, there's nothing a glut. For Kumar and thousands like him, life's looking up again. Some six kilometers away inland, Bala Saraswati, whose father and brother-in-law are fishermen, teaches a group of local children. She started teaching here two months after the tsunami swept away most of her family. Unlike many fellow residents, Bala Saraswati has been able to come to terms with the loss of her loved ones, which perhaps explains her inner strength and will to go on. As one of the few teachers in the colony, she is one of its most respected residents. She's also the guardian of her sister's four young children. After a year spent in temporary relief shelters set up by the government and NGOs, Residents are eager to move into permanent housing. There's a determination to put the past behind, despite the many scars they bear, both physical and emotional. Fishermen enjoy a day off from work because of a bad weather forecast for those headed out to sea. They don't seem to mind too much, especially since their women folk have picked up new vocational skills learned through government and NGO programs. The idea is to transform tragedy into new opportunities with some external support. Many foreign visitors had come here, encouraged them, played games with them. It's like they have totally uh, changed now. And this new attitude has also changed the landscape of the remote, unknown villages along the Tamil Nadu coastline remarkably. Attention is now focused on new vistas of employment and business. Along the coastline, modelled structures for permanent houses stand ready in many villages. Some 100,000 such homes are to be built through public-private efforts. Tsunami resistant housing for the people is one thing, but it has to go beyond that to protecting the farmlands, the infrastructure, the economy of this entire region. The 1.5 kilometer stretch behind me has over 250,000 saplings, over 40 acres, designed to act as the world's largest bio shield in years to come to protect in case tsunami terror strikes again. This is Nagapattinam's way of remembering the victims of the tsunami. Bioshield project Pushpavanam, or the Forest of Flowers, had called for the planting of one sapling for each victim of the tsunami worldwide. 